Hello. Uh, for those of you fellows who don't know me, my name is Pat Septon. I am your counsel at large here in Hanwell. As promised, we're going to review all the codes of conduct against me uh, so you, the public, have some insight of what has been going on and behind the thing. I want to let you know that the McGinnis Cooper Law Firm affiliate, uh, the one who did the investigation, uh, quote unquote, uh, stated it would be absurd for a government to have to follow all its rules in cases of serious breaches. Um, paraphrasing the last part, serious, but it, it, I'm quoting, it would be absurd result. Uh, I can't make that one up. That's Governments have to follow their lo laws is absurd result. Uh, so we couldn't follow our code of conduct policy, which was uh, skip, go, charge, pat. Uh, by the way, just to, as a follow up, April 27th, I've been found, uh, of course, guilty for further uh, codes of conduct, which we'll review, uh, uh, submitted by Council McKinsey. Um, and we'll, we'll get to those. Uh, but I also now have to work, uh, I'm like Buzz Lightyear now, I am to work for Infinity until I'm under their thumb. Uh, so when we're going through this next one, it's a bit dry because it's about policy. But let me just read the, uh, these are statements that they used against me, I might add. Uh, email sent to the governance committee stating, uh, this is what I said, I would have to review all the work to see what other changes, if anything else, was were done. Do we do this a lot? Should there be, should we do an audit? Like a list of other arbitrarily changed motions or laws or policies. You can see how I was just way above board there. Uh, I'm not allowed to be malicious or harmful, apparently, is the charges. Uh, as accusing the assistant clerk of falsifying documents in the email. Unfortunately, the assistant, the clerk now, is going to be a byproduct of this. I just like to point out that she actually acknowledged immediately uh, when I pointed out that there was a mistake and that was it. This became more uh, impactful when the CAO jumped in because, well, who doesn't like a bandwagon? Uh, Council of McKinsey, uh, sorry, Council of Septon in an accusatory tone, like emails, accusatory tone, but we'll carry on. I'm not interested in he said, she said, please see the thread below. The changes to the bylaw seem intentional. And then, of course, uh, it sums up this code of conduct, by the way, with uh, Council of Septon responded, I may add, I should not be attacked for challenging issues or methodologies, especially when the process turned out to be wrong. Though the attack on me was predictable, I look forward to the mayor's and the clerk's, now the CAO, uh, clerk's office to be used as a club against me, again, for point, uh, pointing it out. Yeah, <laughs> you can skip all the rules, the McGinnis Cooper affiliate states, clearly. It'll be an absurd result to have to follow all the rules in serious issues such as this, me reading that. Now let's talk about what happened. There was a motion that was on the table. Now I'm gonna get a little wonky here. Uh, this one was about council's pay. Who cares, right? But the argument, the majority of the room at the time wanted, uh, in, in, in the policy the way it was written, was up to $300 a day to remunerate counselors. Now, we don't get paid $300 a day, but this is a case, there's a, there's a, a, a fire, uh, counselors have to leave their job to work for the, you on behalf of the public in case there's a plane crash, uh, emergency, whatever it is, and maybe they work 24 seven and they have to be called away some way to keep things going because it is necessary as part of the emergency plan. The problem was, and I believe the mayor was for it up to, and, and I like the mayor that he's fiscally responsible. He, that is what I believe his thinking was. Um, you know, if you get paid $60 a day, why would we pay you $300? If you get paid $200 a day, why are we going to pay you $300? And, and that's a reasonable argument, and I, I don't want to take that from him. My argument is, just because I'm at peak of my pay doesn't mean somebody else who isn't, for instance, retired people, as I looked around the room, they should get the same pay as I because we're going to be doing the same work. I know that seems wonky and you don't have to care with me. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to uh, think I'm right or wrong. The issue is, when I showed up to council because I was prepared for this debate, it was actually the one that we read that night, which was different from uh, when we did it in the min session, uh, was the way I wanted it. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even have to debate this. It's going to be perfect. Of course, I have a guilty conscience. I suffer a, a, a Catholic conscience. Um, so when the whole night was over, Councillor uh, Heislip, I believe, stood up and said, hey, there was a couple of grammar issues in this thing. And, and I said, yeah, you know, guys, I was ready for this. I was ready to defend this motion because I was going to fight to the tooth that it'd be $300, not up to. So not up to. You get the same as everybody gets the same, regardless of if they're retired or otherwise. Councillor, uh, so that, that was that night. 
uh, Wednesday night of, uh, uh, I, I forget, it could be May, uh, honestly, I think it might have been May. Anyway, come July. So two days later, I get an email from the now clerk. Uh, again, this story isn't necessarily about her. When I pointed out the issue, she apologized, and that was it. Um, but uh, two days later, I got it. Pat, what was that? What was the thing was supposed to be? And this is all an email, by the way. You can see the thread. So I'm telling you, I have a TikTok. It's clear as day. Um, what was the two days after? Uh, what was the uh, what was the way it was supposed to be? So I told him, and then the the clerk, the, the assistant clerk at the time, emailed back saying it's been changed, and I never thought of any, anything of it for a day, maybe two, and I was like, wait a minute, changed, changed, because I was saying and thinking they're going to bring it back, and we were going to debate that particular item again. Um, anyway, come to find out in July, I happened to see it online, and sure enough, and mind you, I did ask, uh, hey, are we going to post this soon? Because I was kind of curious what was going to happen. So we had a motion that was agreed to by council and a staff member, intentional or otherwise, arbitrarily changed it after asking two days later. Now I want you to understand, this, this affects me personally because of the governance. Uh, the theory is when we make a motion, that is the law. In theory, it should not be able to be changed randomly by any random person. Um, during the, uh, the CAO's testimony against me on December 6th, where she used, uh, how do you like those onions? A uh, goodwill hunting reference, I think. Um, uh, in, in light of something I was talking about with the uh, school sidewalk and principal, and we're gonna be talking about that one next. Um, she stated that this, she doesn't understand why I'd even bring this up uh, because it doesn't even affect her anyway. I'd argue there's no uh, motion that affects her. She doesn't live in our community. That's not a negative thing. Uh, it just happens to be. Uh, but the second thing she said, it was just a typo. Uh, this is what you, you can hear it yourself in December 6th. It was just a typo. I'd argue two days later is not a typo. I don't care how you spin it. Two days later is an intentional act, especially when somebody reaches out and says, what, could, what should it have been? Now, it gets a little worse as far as I'm concerned because the, 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 the investigator uh, clearly 100% sides with, with the council, make no mistake here, uh, the, the council three and, and, and the CAO, um, in that it was my fault on this situation because I answered. But doesn't that make it worse? I don't really have a lot of authority here. This council and I are at odds. It's, 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 it's practically clear, right? We all get this at this point. And I was able to change a law via an email and the McGinnis Cooper affiliate thinks that's okay because I brought it up to him. I stated, wait a minute. Doesn't that just make it worse if some random person... Imagine if somebody got along and wanted to change a law. Imagine if they used their abilities for evil. That's why we're supposed to have checks and balances. In this reality, it should have been a simple, Pat, we had a screw up with the processes. I understand what happened. I think this is how we're going to fix it so that it doesn't happen again. Instead, I get charged with the code of conduct. I am the guilty party. The council three found me that I should work for infinity and beyond on Buzz Lightyear without pay until I'm under their thumb. Hanwell, you get a lot, you're gonna to have to get involved or you're gonna to have to accept it because I'm running out of steam. Everything we've been going through, including these videos I'm posting, has been going to the ombud. People need to speak up. We need the province to get involved. We need some grown-ups in the room to accept that when a mistake happens, you accept it and not charge the person who came out with it. I feel like this is Rob Blah Blah's thing on Arrested Development. Why should you go to jail for a crime somebody else noticed? I don't feel like this is a crime, but it certainly isn't good governance.